What happened to Showdown Bandit? If you know Showdown Bandit, then you probably also know Bendy, but if you do not know Showdown Bandit and you know Bendy, well, I'm surprised you do not know it because the Bendy game in the whole studio, Kindly Beast, well, now they're not named as Kindly Beast anymore, but they had a whole different studio dedicated to Bendy called Joey Juice Studios. Then they also made a different studio called Kindly Beast, made for other different games, with their very first one being Showdown Bandit. When it first came out, I'm pretty sure it released for like, what, seven, eight, nine bucks? I'm pretty sure it was like eight bucks on Steam. Or like, if you do not know what you're doing, the game should at least be around two hours long of gameplay. But if you know what you're doing, the game is a max around one hour of gameplay to be fully honest the price is just okay for it it wasn't the best but when he when he played the game many people even knew it just looked not as good also to mention the whole entire game got delayed too so that also did not help its case making the whole entire game and everyone that played it all really just wandering many questions of what happened to the game and it wasn't just the game that happened you know we all know that the game was also removed off steam if you go on steam right now you cannot find the game it is gone they removed it you can try to go look it up but it says you cannot play the game anymore i of course played the game on my channel before when it first came out so i still own it never download it never play it who knows i played it once obviously but i might go back and play it for like a live stream it may be pretty fun but of course the one thing that stopped it from happening was also you know um maybe a, a certain lawsuit as you can see here this is the photo of the lawsuit for almost half a billion dollars do you know how much a billion is i'm pretty sure you do but a billion is literally a hundred millions and do you know how much a million dollars is i think you know it's it's definitely a lot 435 million dollars but the thing is what's the lawsuit for who is it it's fat mojo llc versus joey juice studios yes with this whole lawsuit being known, literally, we haven't heard any news off Benny Doc Revival, showing on Bandit, anything like that. So it came with a bunch of people making different theories, and one of them is, you know, their merch. This is it, the merch. Uh, when the game first came out, Showdown Bandit, it didn't just come out like a buggy and not buggy mess. It just came out as a, I guess not really like a game. Many people didn't really like it. It didn't really, like, it wasn't that good when it obviously came out. But guess what? Of course, uh, Kindly Beast thought that, yo, this game is going to be so big, it's going to be like another Bendy. Do you know what happens? We need to marketize it. We need to make market on it fast. Do you know what we're going to do? Make a whole bunch of action figures, plushies, and mystery clips. Because why not? And also, let's make it to exclusive to Walmart. Because also, why not? You guys can see here, these are the plushies. The quality was extremely low. They did not look good at all, as you can see here. They're not really good at all. Like, they're not good. Also, these are the action figures. Well, these also the action figures, as you can also see. They also do not look that good. Some of them looked cursed, but they're not as bad as the plushies. They just weren't as good, too. Also, them, these are them sitting on the shelf still at Walmart's because why not? And these are a little bit of a more up-close look at the action figures. They're not as bad as the plushies, but they also could have been a lot. They also had these mystery clips, 10 of them to collect. A little blurry photo on Google of all 10 of them you get. Two of them are gold and like an emerald recolor type because, you know, why not? Also, they didn't have the most characters in the game to even do mystery minis of, so that kind of stuck. Maybe don't make a whole bunch of toys off of a game they literally have no entire idea about. Like, we all came at Poppy Playtime for making plush and being marketized so heavily when the game came out, but like, they didn't get a whole bunch of merch in store when the game came out like a little bit before the game even came out that that did not happen they made it only one plus but that was at least two to three months after the game already came out so y'all coming out of probably playtime we should really come out the bendy team and if you really think that yo maybe because these plus these toys and merchandise has a bad history maybe they're gonna go for so much on ebay oh never mind the, the full set of all three of them that would have retailed you or would have cost you around 30 to 32 bucks is going for less than eight bucks and nobody's even bidding on it S same thing for the plushies just sitting there all three of them they're not new though but still nine bucks that's less than a price for one and if you think yo maybe they could be selling for a lot maybe they sold for so much oh no this is even less all of them with the tag brand new for less than a dollar plus shipping less than five dollars that is more that's like what's 55 percent off of just one plush for all three of them don't worry it gets worse four dollars 
plus shipping, like $10 in total for all three of them that would have costed you 30. The market isn't really good for these. We are probably wondering right now what went wrong. Why was the game bad? Why did they make a home of merch that looked bad and also is just bad? Also, the mystery minis are probably the best things ever. The whole clips is probably the best quality out of all of them. But this is actually why. This is a post from one of the developers of Showdown Bandit saying, here, Showdown Bandit development. Like, I've seen a number of bad of reviews about Showdown Bandit, and I just want to make one thing clear. At the beginning of August, Mike and immediately decided to take over the development over development of the game. They scrapped all of the code we have written, we had written, and the levels we had created. They spent the next few weeks working radio silent, not showing up at the office, not communicating with anyone, not even handle, uh, not even uh, handing off build to QA, aka the game testers. Uh, if you're play, if you play the game and want to leave a bad review, just know that the dev team in the uh, credits wasn't actually part of the final release. Saying. Um, uh, same thing ha same thing was happening to Bending Duck Revival before the layoff. You know, the whole laying off of 50 employees that made after that. Also, the lawsuit happened. Lots of things happened. Also, this year, here's the one thing with Showdown Bandit was, I think it was like an estimated price tag of around, I don't know, $10 million to make it all. So, obviously, they wanted to marketize it. Of course, they wanted to make merch. They wanted to make this game big, successful, and popular. But, of course, just taking and canceling everything a team worked on to make a game that fits your your own vision definitely sucks. Maybe that's why Ben Dark Rival isn't, you know, I guess as scary as good as many people are thinking, probably because this is the same thing that happened with Showdown Bandit, but at least Bendy didn't turn out as terrible as Showdown Bandit, in my opinion. It's not a bad game, it's just not what it could have been. And here, I'm going to be showing you, showing you guys some of the photos that was potentially for more chapters, maybe chapter 2, 3, or 4. Or maybe these are some of the cancelled things that, you know, we never got to see the light of the day. This is one of the characters. It's a cool looking cab uh, cowboy. He's called the Outlaw. Looks pretty cool. You know, this is a cool character. But as you guys can see here, there's a whole bunch of different locks, a whole bunch of different keys, a whole bunch of different cool safe areas, different power-ups, different UIs. It looks very cool. You also see here, there's a whole bunch of different characters like TNT head guys trapped up with TNT, just half body, just in head, just arms and limbs like miners. It's called the Forgotten. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Nitro. Oh, it was called Nitro. Dang. Also, this is your in game icons. This is how like some icons look in game. Don't know if this is actually in the final game. Let us know. Also, this is like in 20. Then we got here the Forgotten Whispers, and as you guys can see here, there's a whole bunch of different characters, like just arms, just almost the heads. And if you look at these, these look extremely cool. These look like some horror stuff. Like if I seen this in the game, it definitely looks extremely scary and cool and eerie and creepy. This would have been really good. Sadly, only the spiders somehow made it in the game, but like why did another thing else of these? These look so cool. Also, they have the Forgotten Screamers. And as you guys can see here, these dudes have such, like, the mouth is so big, it's all ripped up. As you guys see here, home's a big beast, and it's Godzilla style bodies. And you can see they look so cool with the mouth designs. They just look so good. Same thing here with the Forgotten Miners and Chainers, or Chains, don't know what that is. But you can see homes of different Godzilla-type builds there, Beasts, you can see homes of different Miners, looking so cool, I, I love this. You will also see some in-game builds of like a whole hospital, general store that never saw the Day of Light. Another one with the hotel that also never got to see the Day of Light. Also another one, it never happened. These almost are different posters that I think did actually make it in the game. It's in-game posters, so look, something made it in. Some more in-game posters, part two. And of course, some various assets with I think half of these actually making it in the game, so you know, we don't need to talk about them. Also, these are almost the things that did not make it in the game. A whole bunch of different variations of weapons you can actually go and play with, and you can go and, you know, attack people with. It just looks very cool. Sadly, that is everything. And as you guys can see from this one video, what have you learned of why, you know, you came here for one question. What happened to Showdown Bandit? What happened was corporate greed. Everyone wants a whole bunch more money. They just wanted a successful game. They went to ambitious. They wanted it all to themselves. So they ended up changing it to make it fit their own vision just for the game to end up failing, which it probably would have succeeded, as you can see from all the content brought. This looks like a promising, really good Scary Hog game that looks pretty unique, that could have been something really good and maybe even revivaled Bendy one day. But sadly, it did not happen. 
that got too greedy, made the game, made a whole bunch of different merch too that ended up failing, and of course, probably ended up in that lawsuit. Yeah, I've still no entire idea if this lawsuit is because of the Showdown Bandit merch literally failing, because if you look up on Google Showdown Bandit toys and on eBay, you can literally see some clearance stickers for only a dollar a piece. As you can see, Walmart wanted to get rid of these, and I've been going to Walmart like when this first came out, and I've been seeing them all over the place. They was was always there. They were just there. Nobody wanted to get them. So we have no entire idea. As you can see, uh, Fat Mojo is, of course, the manufacturer. Fat Mojo, the one suing them, is the one actually doing the merch. Fat Mojo was the one that made all these, and is the one making the Puppy Playtime merch, the one making the Pessimal X merch. If you know, you know, and let's hope they don't get another lawsuit for half a billion dollars. But you can see they're trying to go and sue Joey Drew Studios, you know? the stu studio behind Bendy. But of course, at this time in 2021, I think Kindly Beast Studios or Kindly Beast were just, you know, gone. They got rid of that. So I do think that's why they couldn't sue Kindly Beast, the one that created Showdown Bandit with their own separate studio. And they went to sue Joey Drew Studios for their failing toys, probably for some weird reason. Or maybe this is because of some Bendy toys. Maybe Joey Drew Studios and the Meatly did some shady things that Fat Mojo did not like, so they went to go and sue them. We have no entire idea what caused this uh, lawsuit, but it's also probably the reason why we're never seeing anything else for Showdown Bandit. And it's the reason why Bendy took so long. But at this day, we still know nothing about this lawsuit and it's still a big mystery. But the only thing and the newest thing we got on Showdown Bandit was this one photo on an official Twitter page for it showing a hand coming back like it's a resurrection or them planning to remake the game but at this point in time we have no time news that was like years ago so the game is probably never coming back and that's what happened to Showdown Bandit. Don't forget to watch my other videos like my Bendy and almost other cancelled and you know uh, what's it called? A, can a cancelled concept thought that never got to see the dot ladder day either because that is pretty interesting. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below and ask you all this video. Let me know what you think about Showdown Bandit. Did it have potential? Could it be great? Sadly, who knows?